Everfree Guardian, Chapter 9, Part 2. There you go, little mousy. Fluttershy smiled as she placed the tiny rodent in her palm on the floor, the creature limping slightly on its hind leg before turning and making its way towards its hole in the corner of the room. Two other mice, one noticeably smaller than it, were waiting for their companion to return to them. Having injured its leg, Fluttershy had catered to it, bandaging and splinting its leg as best as she could for something ten times lesser size. Keeping her smile as the mouse reached the two awaiting it, she leaned forward, rubbing the rodents over its back lovingly. Now you stay off that leg and do everything like I told you, and you'll be back on your feet in no time. She watched as the family of mice retreated back into the hole. Just as they did, Fluttershy's closest companion, Angel, came scampering up to her. A letter, stamped and sealed with a star-shaped insignia, was tucked in his mouth. Taking it from him, Fluttershy curiously opened it. The star shape had an almost identical color to Twilight Sparkle's cutie mark, but what was odd was the fact that she sent a letter to Fluttershy through the mail. She almost never does that. She usually teleports messages to her, or comes and tells her anything she needs of Fluttershy in person. Opening the letter, she slowly widens her eyes at the frantic scribbles of her unicorn friend. Twilight was obviously panicked. Either things didn't go as planned for something she was expecting to happen, or it didn't happen fast enough. There were some legible writing here and there, key fragments that told the message all on its own. Four o'clock, princesses, sugar keep corner, bring the Everfree Guardian. Reading those tangible sentences over and over again, Fluttershy slowly lowered the notes. She blinked to herself as she glanced up at the clock, seeing it was 3.55. Taking a deep breath, she leaned back against her couch, taking a page from Applejack's book, and swearing. Oh, Puck. <sighs> Nathan pressed himself against a tree as he had finally reached the end of the Everfree Forest. Just as he did, his vision began to pulsate and waver. Flickers of orange and blue flashes discoloring everything as his head pounded with pain. Some of it lessened enough for him to look up, and sitting on the bench ahead of him was... another... human. What? <clears throat> he groaned in pain as another wave of painful flashes came, and it all stopped. Taking a breath, Nathan stood upright, looking ahead at the bench. No one was there now. What was once sitting there was now gone leaving him alone with the occasional gust of wind blowing by. What the hell? Am I losing it? He rubbed his eye, as an odd glow was coming from his backpack. A soft blue and orange hue, separated, but meshing as their light shined through the seams of his bag. Unaware of it, he ventured on towards Fluttershy's cottage, hoping to visit her before heading into Ponyville. Just as he reached the bridge to cross over, the door to her house flung open and a splash of yellow came speeding out at him. Having only a split second to react, Nathan wasn't able to defend himself before he was tackled to the ground. Groaning as his face was buried in Fluttershy's stomach, the Pegasus Mare whined at the recoil of the collision, rubbing her head as she got off him. Ow! Uh, I'm sorry, Nate. <laughs> uh, wait. She paused, staring at him for a moment. After a few seconds passed, she gasped as he got to his knees, clasping her hands at his cheeks and squeezing them together. Nate, thank goodness! I was just about to come and find you! Quickly, we have no time to lose! She hovered into the air, pointing towards Ponyville. There's something really important that we have to be at in Sugar Cube Corner. I just got a letter telling me to bring you. She bit her lip, hoping he'd buy that there was something wrong. Looking at her, then to Ponyville... Nathan grabbed his multi-tool and followed her as he ran alongside her. The blaring ceremonial horns made them pick up the pace. Ducking and weaving around ponies as they came into town, Nathan was quick to have a path open for him. He's been around long enough for ponies to know when to not step in his way. And if he's running like a bat out of hell, then there must be something seriously wrong. Stopping only to see where Fluttershy went, he turned to his right to see her stopping before two... Oh, oh no... Royal Guards. Shit. How did he not realize? What would be so important that Fluttershy would bring him here at a time like this? The Yellow Pegasus sighed as she landed before them, taking a breath and smiling. Whew, we finally made it. She made to walk forward to the shop, 
but stopped when she spotted Nathan standing so far back. Flicking her ears, she eyed the guard standing with her, motioning him to come with her. The guard's eyes turned to Nathan as he took a step back, the grip on his weapon tightening as one of them held a rune up to his mouth. Contact? Every free guardian is in sight. Do not engage. Nathan heard buzzing from all around him, little sparks that sounded like crackles of channeled lightning fizzling outwards from location to location. Glancing at the rooftops, he spotted more guards staring down at him, some posted in alleyways and one even back the way he came. Tensing up, his nerves tightening and muscles twisted in alarm, Nathan put the multi-tool away and drew out a shotgun. God damn it, Fluttershy, I trusted you! He pointed the barrel at the closest guard who was stupid enough to take a step towards him. Fuck you, and fuck your monarchs! No! Fluttershy flew towards him as the guards all around him readied their spears. The two standing at the door to Sugar Cube Corner panicked as well, seemingly more informed at the fragility of the situation regarding the Guardian. The first one pulled up his rune again, just as Fluttershy hugged onto Nathan from behind, keeping him from engaging the Royal Guards. All units stand down and retreat! I repeat, stand down and fall back to Canterlot! Extreme numbers and assertion will irritate the Guardian, we do not need blood spilled before the princesses! The two looked at the others expectantly, some of them hesitating to move before flying or marching away from the location. A few stubborn ones stayed for a few seconds longer before following that order, leaving Nathan to slowly lower his shotgun. Taking a few breaths to steady himself, he turned around to face Fluttershy. The hit was light and the pain was almost non-existent, but Fluttershy felt all the emotion in that very gently and feeble slap to her cheek. What the hell are you thinking? Me? You actually thought it was a good idea to bring me here? To them? Why? You know what this'll lead to! Mate! There's a reason I stayed hidden in the Everfree, and that's because your government wants to skin me alive! Mate! Half of Cantalot wants me dead, and you brought me to the rulers! Are you trying to get me killed? Or has your time in Ponyville been so goddamn lax with caring for annoying shitting animals that you've gone fucking brain dead? <sighs> Nathan paused as his mind calmed, and the red in his vision faded. With his heart slowing down, he realized what he had said. Not only has he insulted Fluttershy, but he insulted her animals. A thing that's very personal for her. Staying frozen for a long while, eyes locked onto each other. Nathan opened his mouth to mutter an apology. Only to have a hand grab him by his chin and force him to eye level with the usually shy Pegasus mare. What? You want to repeat that? Nathan stayed shock still as Fluttershy's stare was being used at full strength. Her mane darkened her face, and those giant adorable eyes of hers were glowing and slitted. You remember back when Gilda was around, and that everyone had a certain rule for picking on Fluttershy? There's another rule pertaining the Shy Mare that also teeters to the opposite end of that spectrum. You don't make Fluttershy cry, and you sure as shit don't make her genuinely angry. Because a pissed off Fluttershy is something not even Nathan could take on, and he knows this from experience. It's just as bad as a sexually frustrated Fluttershy. All in all, this beast of a woman is a powdered keg just waiting to be blown sky high. And the fuse for that bomb can be cut extremely short if you insult or threaten anything she holds dear. Her animal friends are extremely high on that list. Raising his hands up, Nathan gulped as he shook his head. Good. Now, you're going to listen to me, and you will not talk until I'm done. Understand? He nodded as best as he could in a grip, almost feeling a wave of relief when Fluttershy's stare lessened. You've told a lot of vague stories about where you're from. You've never described what your life was like, but you've always told us about the life around you. Earth, humanity, the many different nations, and government. One thing you always mention in every story was how they would react to us ponies. To you, we are alien. And to you, we are an opportunity. You say you crave power and gain it through knowledge, and that includes through any foreign life your government gets its hands on. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you Equestria is different. We aren't. But if there's one difference between your kind and mine, is that we don't catch and kill alien life just to throw them on an operating table. Fluttershy pointed to Sugar Cube Corner. 
I brought you here without telling you so I can prove that. There is either one or all of Equestria's card princesses behind that door. You will meet them, Nathan Schmidt. And you will see for yourself that I'm right. I... <sighs> and if I say no... Fluttershy's stare hardened once more as she pulled his face closer to hers. The full effect of her powerful ocular magic having the desired effect. Nathan felt a shiver go down his spine. A very familiar and paralyzing fear seeping into his core. Seeing the message was received, Fluttershy let him go watching him sternly as she pointed towards Sugar Cube Corner. Shuffling past her, he turned and strode to the door, depositing the weapons he had with the guards when instructed to. I don't know if this is just me, but the drama kind of reminds me of an anime. I can't point out exactly what anime, but it just, it's similar. Anyway, let's get on to our heroic donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Surreal Ryan, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Matchbook 109, Jock Tf, Darkside Raiden, Arles, Blick Moon, Our Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Two Hexor, Feather Mortar, and Omicron Library, Reef 9052, Will Curse, Twinkie, Rice, Old Shadow, Mumu, Jade, H, Chancellor Crust, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat, GGF, Murder Princess, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and love life to the fullest.